नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ मशीन डिजाइन इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर यू हैव लर्न अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ रोलिंग कांटेक्ट बेरिंग्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रोलिंग कांटेक्ट बेरिंग्स इन व्हिच वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट रोलिंग कांटेक्ट बेरिंग्स लाइक अ डीप ग्रू बॉल बेरिंग सिलिंड्रिकल रोलर बेरिंग एंगुलर कांटेक्ट बेरिंग एंड टैपर रोलर बेरिंग okay now let us start this lecture with the content of this lecture sir self aligning ball bearing thrust ball bearing materials for the ball bearing selection of bearing type and static load carrying capacity of the rolling contact bearing now let us start with the self aligning roller bearing so there are two types of the self aligning rolling contact bearing that is the self aligning ball bearing and spherical roller bearing okay so the principle of self aligning bearing we will discuss in the next slide okay so the self aligning ball bearing it consists of the two row of balls which roll on a common spherical surface in the outer race so in this case the assembly of the shaft the inner race and the ball with cage can freely roll and adjust itself to the angular misalignment of this shaft okay so there is similar arrangement in the spherical roller bearing where balls are replaced by two rows of spherical rollers which run on a common spherical surface in the outer race compared with the self aligning ball bearing the spherical roller bearing it can carry relatively high radial and thrust load so both type of the self aligning bearing it permits the minor angular misalignment of the shaft relative to the housing so this self aligning uh, ball bearings are therefore particularly suitable for the applications where some misalignment can arise due to the errors in mounting or due to the deflection of the shaft so such type of the self aligning uh, bearings are used in agriculture machinery ventilators and railway axle boxes okay so you can see simple construction of this self aligning roller bearings okay so the two rows of rollers are you can see so they can tolerate the some amount of the misalignment due to the error in the mounting here you can see this is the self uh, uh, aligning ball bearing okay. now let us understand the principle of self aligning bearing okay so you can see here in this figure a b c okay so in figure a uh, shaft is aligned with the bearing okay and in this figure b the shaft is misaligned with bearing and in figure c here you can see this is the self aligning bearing okay now you can see here uh, this figure it shows the self aligning principle okay so in this Uh, in many applications the bearing is required to tolerate a small amount of misalignment between the axis of the shaft and bearing so this misalignment it may be due to the deflection of the shaft under load or due to the tolerance of individual component so self aligning bearings are used in these applications so uh, a shaft Okay, so here the shaft, which is perfectly aligned with the bearing, is shown here in this figure. Okay, so when the shaft is deflected under the load, so it exert pressure at the edge of the bearing. Okay, you can see here at this portion, it will exert the pressure at the edge of the bearing uh, at this portion as well as this portion. Okay, so the edge pressure is dangerous and it may be result in undue wear 
and breakdown of the oil film. So in self-aligning bearing, the external surface of the bearing boost is made spherical as shown here in this figure. Okay, so it made a spherical. You can see this shape is a spherical. So the center of this spherical surface is at the center of the bearing. Okay, so you can see this center is at the center of the bearing. So therefore, the boost is free to roll in its seat and align itself with the journal. Okay. So arrangement is made to the provide uh, lubricant between the spherical surface of the boost and its seat in order to reduce the friction. So this, this uh, principle is used in self-aligning uh, ball bearing and spherical roller bearing. Okay. So the angular misalignment alpha, here you can see this is the angular misalignment alpha is aggregated in the figure, figure okay so self aligning bearing are commonly employed when the accurate uh, alignment is impossible or unfeasible okay so this is the basic uh, uh, principle of self aligning bearing okay. then uh, next one is a thrust ball bearing okay so you can see here the thrust ball bearing in which uh, you can see the basic diagram of the thrust bearing and you can see the actual cut sectional view of the thrust ball bearing okay so this is the uh, bearing diameter okay sharp torsor and the rolling elements are the ball okay and this is the known uh, as a bearing height so this thrust ball bearing it consists of the two row of balls okay which running uh, between the two rings okay so the shaft ring and the housing ring okay shaft ring as well as the housing ring this is known as the housing ring and this is known as the uh, shaft ring okay this is the shaft ring and the housing ring so thrust ball bearing it carries the only the thrust load in only one direction and it cannot carry any radial load okay, so the use of the large number of balls result in the high thrust load carrying capacity in smaller space so this is the major advantage of the thrust bearing okay now uh, let us see some disadvantages of this is thrust bearing so the disadvantages uh, this thrust ball bearing it cannot take radial load okay so uh, it is not self aligning so cannot tolerate the misalignment and their performance is uh, uh, satisfactory at low and medium speed so at high speed such bearing it gives the poor service because the balls are subjected to centrifugal forces and gyroscopic couple and this thrust ball bearings uh, do not operate as well on horizontal shaft as they do uh, on vertical shaft so thrust ball bearing requires the continuous pressure applied by the spring to hold the rings together okay so these are the disadvantages of the thrust ball bearing so in short we can say uh, thrust ball bearing is used where the axial load is acting on the bearing or it cannot take the any radial load so this is all about the thrust ball bearing okay. now uh, let us uh, see the materials used for the parts of the rolling contact bearings okay uh, so as we know that the thrust ball bearings are used where the heavy thrust load, okay. For example, the warm gear boxes and crane hooks. So there are uh, specific materials for the parts of the rolling contact bearing. Okay, so the ball and the inner and outer races are made of high carbon chromium steel. Okay, like uh, SAE five two one double zero or AISI 5210 okay so this is SAE 
uh, 52100 and AISI 5210. This is the uh, materials designation. Okay, so each uh, number has the specific characteristics. Okay, and specific pro uh, properties of this material. So it contains the one percent carbon and one point five percent chromium, and the balls and resins are through harden to obtain the minimum hardness of fifty eight uh, Rockwell C. Yes, and the cages are made from the stamping of low carbon steel, and the rollers or the rolling elements okay, or the balls are made of case hardened steel. Uh, like AISI double three one zero four six two zero or eight six two zero. Okay, so they are case carburized to obtain a surface hardness of fifty eight Rockwell C. So this is the different materials we use for the bearing. So sometimes some special purpose material uh, are used for the special purpose bearing. Okay, as per the application of the bearing, but generally. Uh, for the ball and the rolling contact bearing, uh, the the material, same materials we have discussed, are used in the bearing. Now, uh, different applications of the roller bearings. Okay. Uh, so taper roller bearing, okay, T R B. So this taper roller roller bearing, it can take both radial and axial loads. And which are used for the gear boxes for heavy trucks, wheel gear transmission, lead spindles, etc., etc. Then uh, thrust ball bearing, so it can take only thrust load. So thrust ball bearings are used for heavy axial loads and low speeds. Uh, speeds. So as discussed, that uh, warm gear boxes and crane hooks. Then. Uh, needle roller bearing, so it use the small diameter of rollers. Okay, so they are used for the radial load at slow speed and oscillating motion. So they have the advantage of light weight and occupy the small space. So needle uh, bearing roller bearings are used in the aircraft industries, live tailstock centers, uh, bench drill spindles. Etc. Okay, so these are the different applications of the taper roller bearing, thrust bearing, and needle roller bearing. Okay. Then uh, types and performance of the rolling bearings. Okay, so now from this uh, table, uh, you can understand very well the types of bearing and its performance at the various applications. Okay. So here you can see the bearing types. Okay, so the different types of the bearing: deep through ball bearing, angular contact ball bearing, cylindrical roller bearing, uh, needle roller bearing, taper roller bearing, self-aligning roller bearing, and thrust ball bearing. Okay, so different types of the bearings are shown here. Okay, then the different characteristics are uh, indicated here. Okay, so load carrying capacity. Uh, two arrow means it can take the axial load as well as the radial load. Okay, so this vertical arrow it it uh, indicate the radial load and the horizontal arrow it indicate the axial load. Then high speed rotation performance during the high speed rotation performance during the low noise and vibrations. Okay, low friction torque, high rigidity and allowable misalignment for inner and outer. Rings and non-separable or separable. Okay, so here the star means the number of the star. It indicates the degree to which that bearing type display that particular characteristics. Okay, and the full star. Okay, the full star it means not applicable to that bearing type. Okay, and uh, here you can see the circle. It means indicate the both inner ring and outer ring are detachable. Okay. And here some numbers are written. Uh, see the some cylindrical roller bearing with rib can bear an axial load. Now here you can see. Let us start a deep groove ball bearing. Okay, so it can take the radial as well as the axial load in both the sides. The two arrows are there, so it can take the axial load both sides. Okay, and it can take the radial load. Okay, and 
the high speed rotation it has good for four stars are there so uh, high speed rotation it performance is friction torque okay it is good in low friction torque okay so uh, rigidity high there is no any stars okay so it is a uh, low per poor performance okay and uh, allowable misalignment for the inner and outer wings only one star is there okay so similarly for the angular contact ball bearing the at the high speed rotation it gives a good performance okay at uh, low noise and vibration it gives a uh, 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 three stars so comparative to deep groove ball bearing its performance is uh, low compared to the deep groove ball bearing and at the low friction torques there are three stars okay now cylindrical roller bearing so high speed rotation it gives the good performance four stars are there low noise and vibration there only single star so it creates the more noise and vibration compared to the these two bearings low friction torque only single star high rigidity two stars okay so compared to these two bearing it has good rigidity now uh, needle roll bearing you can see high speed rotation three star okay so by this way here you can see in angular contact ball bearing it can take uh, only radial load and axial load in one direction similarly in cylindrical roller bearing it can take the radial and axial load in one direction so this needle roller bearing it can take uh, loads only in one direction that is the radial load okay so taper roller bearing it can take the uh, axial load in one direction and radial load and the self aligning roller bearing it can take uh, uh, both axial load on both the direction and radial load so this thrust ball bearing you can see it can take only a uh, axial load in one direction okay so at high speed rotation it gives the poor performance at uh, okay it will operate under the noise and vibrations okay so from this table uh it is very very useful for the selecting of the any bearing okay and its performance now uh, selection of bearing type okay so the selection of uh, type of bearing in a particular application it depends upon the requirement of the application and the characteristics of different types of bearings so the guidelines Uh, for the selecting the proper type of bearing is given here so for the low and medium radial loads generally ball bearings are used okay so whereas for the heavy loads and large shaft diameters the roller bearings are generally selected okay so in self aligning ball bearing and uh, spherical roller bearings are used in the applications where a misalignment between the axis of the shaft and housing is likely to exit okay and the thrust ball bearings are used for the medium thrust load whereas for the heavy thrust load the cylindrical roller thrust bearings are recommended okay so double acting thrust bearing can carry the thrust load in either directions okay uh, deep groove ball bearing angular contact bearings and spherical roller bearings are suitable in applications where the load acting on the bearing consist of two components that is the radial and thrust uh, the maximum uh, permissible okay uh, the maximum permissible speed of the shaft is depends upon the temperature uh, rise in the bearing so for high speed applications uh, deep groove ball bearing angular contact uh, bearing and cylindrical roller bearings are recommended okay and the rigidity controls the selection of bearings in certain applications uh, like machine tool spindle so double row cylindrical roller bearings or taper roller bearings are used under these conditions okay so the line of contact in this bearings are uh, as compared with the point of contact in ball bearing it improves the rigidity of the system okay and noise becomes the criteria 
of selection in applications like uh, household applications for such applications the deep screw ball bearings are recommended okay so knowledge of the design characteristics of different types of bearing and proper appreciations uh, of the needs of an application it enables designer to select a proper type of bearing okay so the characteristics of the bearing should match with the requirement of the applications okay now uh, let us see uh, the static load carrying capacity of the bearing okay so static load is defined as the load which acting on the bearing when the shaft is stationary okay so it produces the permanent deformation in balls and hisses which increase with you know, increasing load okay so je ema permanent deformation je thai che ball ane hiss ma to je em load vade che em permanent deformation pan vade che okay so that permissible static load uh, therefore depends upon the permissible magnitude of permanent deformation okay so uh, from the experience okay from the past experience it has been uh, found that a total permanent deformation of okay total permanent deformation of 0.001 of the ball or roller diameter occurring at the most heavily stressed ball and rest contact it can be tolerated in practice without any disturbance like noise or vibrations okay so uh, the static load carrying capacity of bearing is defined as the static load which correspond to the total permanent deformation of balls and rests at the most heavily stressed point of contact equal to 0.001 of the ball diameter so in short we can say that static load carrying capacity of any bearing itle ke je static load which is corresponding to the total permanent deformation of ball and a rest ke ja most heavily stress point of contact hoy tya 0.001 of ball diameter jetlu thai so that is called the static load carrying capacity of any bearing okay so uh, formulas are given standards for the calculating the static load carrying capacity of different types of the bearing okay so while selecting the bearing it is not necessary to use this formula because the value of static load carrying capacity are directly given in the manufacturer's catalog so which are based on the uh, formulas okay so where condition of friction noise and uh, smoothness are not critical a much higher permanent deformation can be tolerated and consequently static loads uh, up to the four times the static load carrying capacity may be permissible okay so uh, on other hand we can say the where the extreme smoothness of operation is desired a smaller permanent deformation is permitted okay now uh, strybeck has given one equation okay so it is known as the strybeck equation so it gives the static load capacity of the bearing okay so for that uh, strybeck has assumed okay so it gives us some assumption and that assumptions are the rests are rigid and it retains their circular shape Okay, so that means uh, there is a no any deformation on the races. Okay, and the balls are equally spaced. Okay, so distance between the different balls is equal, and the ball in the upper half do not support any load. Okay, so upper half of the ball it do not support any load. Okay, now here in in this figure you can see the different balls. Okay, the different balls are shown and the forces. Okay, acting on the inner rest through the rolling element, which supports the static load C zero. Okay, so you can see the different balls are there. So static load is C zero, and uh, you can see the, they are equally spaced at angle 
beta okay so the load here is p1 p2 p2 p3 okay and this figure one it shows the force is acting on the inner rays and this figure it shows the deflection of inner rays okay so due to the deflection the deflection delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 this is the deflection and this, this, uh, this deflection of center is from o to o dash okay so uh, now let us see uh, it is assumed that the, there is a single row of balls so considering the equilibrium of forces in the vertical direction uh, we will find the equation c0 is equal to p1 plus 2p2 cos beta plus 2p3 cos 2 beta and plus so on from this geometry okay from this geometry we can say p1 okay so p1 okay by equilibrium p1 plus here 2 2 p2 cos beta okay so p2 load is acting here so on two balls are there which are acting the p2 load so therefore we can say 2 p2 and this angle is beta so 2 p2 cos beta then 2 p3 okay cos 2 beta okay this angle is 2 beta so from this way we can find the equation p1 plus 2 p2 cos beta plus 2 p3 cos 2 beta plus so on this is the equation a now from the geometry we can say delta 2 is equal to delta 1 cos beta okay here you can see this is the delta 2 so from we can say uh, delta 2 is equal to delta 1 cos beta so therefore from this equation we can say delta 2 upon delta 1 is equal to cos beta equation b okay now according to the hertz equation the relationship between the load and deflection at each ball is given by delta proportional to p raised to 2 by 3 okay delta proportional to p raised to 2 by 3 so therefore by uh, putting the okay proportionality constant so delta 1 is equal to c1 p1 2 raised to 3 delta 2 is equal to c1 p2 raised to 2 raised uh, to 3 so from that we can say delta 2 by delta 1 is equal to p2 by p1 is to 2 by 3 okay now from this equation b and c okay so equation b and c we can say p2 by p1 is to 2 by 3 is equal to cos beta so from that we can say p2 is equal to p1 cos beta is to 3 by 2 okay p2 is equal to p1 cos beta is to 3 by 2 so in this way we can find p3 is equal to p1 cos 2 beta raised to 3 by 2 okay now put the value okay in equation a okay, p, uh, value of p2 and p3 in equation a so therefore c0 static load carrying capacity is equal to p1 plus 2 p2 p2 means p1 cos beta raised to 3 by 2 into cos beta plus to p3 p3 means p1 cos 2 beta is to 3 by 2 into cos 2 beta and so on okay so therefore uh, by taking the p1 common we will get the 1 plus 2 cos beta 5 by 2 plus 2 cos 2 beta 5 by 2 plus so on now or we can say c0 is equal to p1 into m because you can see this this value is constant okay this angle remains constant so this is totally constant so m p1 into m okay where m is equal to 1 plus 2 cos beta is to 5 by 2 plus 2 cos 2 beta is to 5 by 2 plus and so on okay so you will get the static load carrying capacity c0 is equal to p1 into m okay now if z is the number of balls then beta is equal to 360 by z Okay, beta angle is equal to 360 by z. So this value of m for different values of z are given in this table. Okay, z is equal to 8, 10, 12, 15. These are the number of balls. So value of m is equal to 1.84 for 8 ball, 2.28 for 10 ball, 2.75 for 12, 
and 3.47 for 15 balls. So here value of Z by M is 4.35, 4.38, 4.36, 4.37. 4 so now you can see this value Z by M, it uh, nearly a constant value. Okay, you can see here, this is the constant value. So it is from the table is practically constant. So Stribex is suggest the value Z by M as a five, okay, near to five. So therefore, M is equal to, here one can say, uh, one by five into Z, okay, Z by M is equal to five. So M is equal to Z by five. Now put the value here in this equation. So therefore, C0 is equal to 1 by 5 Z into P1. Okay. So from the experimental evidence, it is found that the force P1 is required to produce a given permanent deformation of, of the ball is given by P1 is equal to K into D square, where D is the ball diameter and the factor K which depends upon the radius of curvature at the point of contact and on the moduli of elasticity of the material. Okay, so therefore, our equation becomes the static load carrying capacity C0 is equal to K into D square Z. Okay, put here P1 is equal to K D square. So therefore, C0 is equal to K D square Z upon 5. So from this equation, you can find the static load carrying capacity of any rolling contact bearing. Okay, so now I hope uh, you can understand very well. And in our next lecture, you will learn about the dynamic load carrying capacity, equivalent bearing load and load factor and selection of bearing from the manufacturer's catalog. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.